there you don't see many of those anymore. Used to be farm tractors of that name all over Saskatchewan. It looks like a gin pole truck. Oil fuel equipment. And looking eastward across the Trossachs Plain, south of Weyburn. An old Fargo that's far gone. Or maybe it's a Dodge that didn't. West Texas crude is selling for about 60 bucks a barrel now. That's down 40 bucks in the last four years. Still, it's worthwhile to have the pumps going at Colgate, Saskatchewan. That's Sunday, May 29th, 2016. And we're looking due west down the middle of the right of way that the Canadian Northern built through here in 1910. At the end of the subdivision, Bradville, is 19.4 rail miles away. Southwest, the Missouri Cateau rises to 200 meters in places above the plains at its feet. Runs diagonally across the province, southeast to northwest. The third prairie stop. Looking due south down Range Road 150, west of the second. Montana is 29 miles that way. The Suris River, or rather the Rafferty Dam Reservoir thereof, is 20k to the east, running diagonally northwest to southeast, heading for Montana. It was the glacial spillway that drained the main of Glacial Lake Regina to the north. Looking due east down the right away, there's a big old piece of railway concrete out there, it looks like. Lapman is 52.9 miles away, where the sub dog legs to the northeast to run up to Maryville on the Brandon Regina line. As mentioned, Radville was the end of the sub, and from there, the Avonlea sub took the line up to Moose Jaw. The Lapman sub was called the Literary Line because so many of the stations were named after prominent authors of the day. Chandler, Browning, Wordsworth, Service, Carlisle, others. More oil field equipment. The Drossack Plain is mainly undifferentiated glacial till from which Solonetsic soils have developed over the eons. Some various oils and churns as well. Really good land, some of it. Some of it's a little pastury, I guess, looking due north up the range road. Really. And back towards the pump shack, working away. And Colgate had a school. The wonderful was right here. Long time gone. Kids commute to the big schools in Radville now. As well, Bell School, 1629, served the neighborhood from 1906 to 1911. Oh, are they escaping? Oh, not very far, I guess. Well, the sign affirms that Colgate was incorporated as a village on January the 3rd, 1911. I guess that's the old fire bell. The corporation was dissolved on May 16, 2000, and now Colgate is a ward of the rural municipality of Loma, number 38. The Colgate Post Office was established on October the 1st, 1910 by S.A. Fox. Maybe in that building there, I saw no evidence of any super boxes anywhere, but I didn't look too hard. And eastward down First Avenue North, I'm not sure there's a First Avenue seven. Main Street kind of dead ends in somebody's farmyard up there. Down first more. This is the west side of Main Street. I don't know what might have stood in that corner there. Might be some ahead of us, maybe machinery dealer. I think they'd be closer to the railroad. And there's this Colgate Cooperative Community. Next door to it on Railway Avenue is 
looks to be an old service station. I don't know what kind of a sign would go in there, maybe a co-op sign. And look at north of me, back at Brides. Creepy old store hiding in the bushes. Canadian Northern built a two-story third-class station in 1912 at Colgate at mile 120.3 from Maryville, head of the sun. I don't know what could have stood in the corner, maybe a hotel here. This is looking east down Railway Avenue. There was three elevators at Colgate, Saskatchewan Co-op, built in 1911, North Star in 1914 and Union Grain in 1927, and the last one was pulled by the Saskatchewan Wheat Pool in 1979. But never mind that, there's a golf course in Colgate. I can hear C.R. Wilson polishing this clubs right now. However, it looks like they're reseeding the fairways here, and perhaps the greens as well. I don't think it'll be open this year. However, get the roller in there and some bent grass, get it all looking nice. Use a little of that oil revenue. So the station was sold off in 1960. Now, as you've noticed, there's no steel on the rail bed anymore. That was pulled off about 1980 when the line was abandoned. The Sewers River broke the line in 1948 and it was never repaired. Over on this side became the good water stub from Radville out. Whoa! A Fomoco Comet right there maybe. 1960? Hmm. Oh, that's how you ripen those things. Well, that's clever. They look like they're both ready. Well, maybe a little dry now. Huh. Colgate was one of four post offices that served this area earlier on. The other three were Ingleford, Millville, and Stinson. The last to close was Ingleford in 1926, and the others were either closed earlier or absorbed by Colgate. Before he died in 1857, William Colgate stunned the literary world with his opus, Canadian Art, its Origin and Development and for him was named Colgate, Saskatchewan.